Okay, Ricky, you've made it once again somehow to the final $1 million question. Here it is. What is an audiophile? Is it A, an old rich person who has a $60,000 sound system, B, a hipster who listens to nothing but vinyl while drinking their favorite IPA at a local craft brewery, C, someone who describes music like a wine sommelier, or D, you? Who are you talking to? What is an audiophile? We all have an idea and chances are that idea is much different from the person next to you. Most hobbies are pretty cut and dry. Do you collect this, then you're that. Audiophilia is a bit more nebulous, but it doesn't have to be. Today I'm gonna get some things off my chest that I think are bad for the hobby and offer some suggestions that I hope are good for it. There are a lot of conceptions and misconceptions about being an audiophile, so let's break it down one step at a time. So there's a belief out there that audiophiles are people who have nothing else better to do than throw their wads of cash at super expensive high-end audio gear. I mean, why else would we go to an audio show and see a $2.1 million stereo loudspeaker system? I mean, who can afford that crap? Truth is, not a whole lot of people. I would argue that audiophilia is not that different from any other hobby out there in the sense that we all choose where we spend our expendable income. Whether it's collecting cards, building a computer for high-end gaming, cars, memorabilia, and more, we spend money on the things that make us happy. Audiophiles are no different. They just spend their money on audio equipment. I dare say if I added up the money I put towards gaming rigs and music instruments, I'd have a pretty nice hi-fi system. But that's the other thing too. Not every piece of equipment in this hobby costs thousands of dollars. You can easily spend a few hundred bucks on what is otherwise audiophile gear for some great quality audio for your music. You don't have to blow your paycheck or take out a payment plan to afford high-end gear. You certainly can do that for some of the top tier stuff, but it's not just a hobby for the rich. There are plenty of great sounding products at reasonable prices. Check out our video on must-have dongle decks for music lovers to learn more. There was a time when I considered audiophiles as those hipsters in the record shops purchasing used or limited released vinyl, and then they'd go off to drink IPAs at their favorite local craft brewery. The fact that they would pursue something vintage in the age of digital because it was anti-establishment and showed an appreciation for music when it was good. Hot take, that last part I'll agree with by the way. There is certainly an appreciation for physical media media within audiophilia. Records, tapes, CDs, it all lends itself to the experience of listening to music as an activity. I say this in my blog, the difference between audiophiles and non-audiophiles is that they are willing to just sit there and listen to the music for the sake of listening to the music. It's an activity in itself, believe it or not, like reading a book, gaming, or going on a walk or bike ride. There is joy to be had in just listening to music. That's partly where the appreciation for physical media comes in. Because when you're sitting there, you're looking at the pictures, the insert, reading the lyrics, and more. It's all part of the immersion of the overall experience. But let's not forget that we live in a digital age. Audiophiles love high resolution music, and those files can be packed with gigabytes of data and are oftentimes streamed via a music streamer. Yep. We're not talking Spotify here, and you're not gonna find any high-res files on a record or CD. So yes, there is a love and nostalgia for the physical, but the high-res music streaming industry is exploding right now, so let's not forget that equally important side of the audiophiles music library. I get it. You read stuff online and it's like a wine expert talking about the undertones and how they can taste the grapes right when they matured and how things like concrete can be included in the palate. 
it's confusing, and it was one of the biggest learning curves for me personally upon entering this hobby. Describing sound is hard, especially when the English language is so confusing on its own. Audiophiles, in a way, need their own vocabulary to describe the properties of the devices that concern the hobby. In this case, many of those properties is about sound and the relative quality therein. Considering these senses, then, it makes a lot of sense then to make comparisons to an onophile. Since, sorry, they have a vocabulary to describe the things they are tasting to differentiate one wine from another. For me, it's red or white, sweet or dry. Anything else is just either over my head or I just don't care. Audiophiles in much the same way have this vocabulary to describe sound in order to differentiate how one piece of music gear sounds different from another. So yeah, if you're not familiar with the vocabulary, it can sound like a foreign language and be quite daunting or even off-putting for those not familiar with the lingo or the hobby. Guess what? If the language scares you or you're just not even sure what some stuff means, go check out our Hi-Fi Decoded Language Guide. We have all the definitions you need and we're updating it all the time. Check it out at the link below and let us know in the comments if you want to see us discuss these terms on YouTube. Myth number four, audiophiles are old guys. Really, Ricky? Seriously? <laughs> Okay, first thing is that statistically speaking, yes, most audiophiles are men. Why? I have no idea. This isn't to say that female audiophiles don't exist, they absolutely do. But if you look at the numbers, it's an overwhelming majority of men who like to cash out for high-end audio gear. Other things to consider here are that statistically speaking, most people who have the largest amount of expendable income are typically older in life and might even be retired. That being said, let's pop up some footage here from Expona, a recent high-end audio show we attended. Duh, not that, uh, yeah, well, there we go. Not just old dudes, people of all ages. It's an understandable misnomer that audiophiles are all old guys, but it's like we've established. So is the price of some of this stuff. It's not all super expensive either. Again, no matter the age, your budget, whatever, we spend our money on what brings us joy. There are plenty of youngins out there that are going to audio shows, buying gear to make their music sound better. And number five, I'm not an audiophile. Here's probably the one myth you didn't know if you made it this far. If you don't consider yourself an audiophile based on the previous myths and misconceptions, then chances are good that you are in fact an audiophile. And that's okay. Moon Audio has an audiophile anonymous support hotline you can call 24 seven, where Chris can give you the emotional encouragement you need to support your new lifestyle. But seriously, all you really need first and foremost is the passion for your music and the desire to make it sound the very best it can. All kinds of budgets, all sorts of system setups and gear types. It brings joy to a lot of people. And if that's you, then cheers. Mm, concrete. Here's to a shared appreciation of music and the gear that makes it sound good. We'll be sure to link to the accompanying blog in the description below where you can find more of my thoughts on the good and bad in the world of audiophilia. If you like this video, be sure to give a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe for more audiophile content just like this. If you have any questions, drop a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.